Hello everyone and welcome to the Orchid Man channel. Um, today I wanted to talk about something very close to me which is basically advice on growing your orchids in the UK. I am going to be generally talking about the actual uh, the Great Britain and a bit of Scotland and I'm not going to be talking about Ireland because I'm not that familiar with them. I know that climate is much wetter than uh, I, the island of Britain. So first of all, let's start. The, as everyone knows, the typical in England description is very cloudy and rainy, um, not that cold, mild and general black. Which is, yes, this is the standard description of uh, UK weather. This is because UK is classified as uh, temperate uh, oceanic weather which basically uh, it's a mix between soft and hard oceanic which describes um, mild temperatures uh, usually it is warmer winters with a lot of precipitation and hot summers however this mixes with both either harsh winters and hot summers or um, mild summers and harsh winter so it is a very big variation uh, usually it's uh, the description of the climate in UK is described as hard oceanic because it is so unpredictable and the temperatures can be very much varied well first of all let's start with point number one which is light requirements or light itself so if you're living in the UK, first advice I will tell you, do not listen to anyone who is living in Spain, Greece, north or south of the US, Australia or India or anyone who's growing orchids in that places because their light requirements are completely different from yours and what is uh, light shade for you, for them it can be uh, actually direct light. So most of the uh, information you will be getting online from people who are actually not located in the same uh, uh, geographical uh, length and uh, uh, climate as you will give you wrong information. So first of all, the uh, solar radiation or UV percentage in the UK is most of the time, it is quite low, uh, unless it's a very hot uh, uh, summer and it's very bright then it go can go really high however most of the time the problems we have in the uk it's either very cloudy uh, it's haze or you have high level stratospheric clouds which basically means that even if it's really sunny and you think it's sunny you will have uh, the uv radiation is going to be lower because of that sunshine that's going through those stratospheric clouds uh, this basically means that you can quite easily grow all of your orchids with at least 20% of direct sunlight during the day, which means that if you have a northern exposure, uh, now northern, southern, east and west, you g can give your orchids uh, direct sun, especially in the morning. I would definitely avoid midday, like 12, 1, 2, 3, especially in the summers. However, morning and afternoon is fine, unless we're talking about Cattleyas, Vandas and all, all, uh, all, all the other ones that require a lot of sun. Then yes, give them as much sun as you can and it's not a problem. Um, I'm saying that because if you're talking with someone who's actually from Spain, you know exactly that, uh, or Greece, that uh, Spanish and Greek summers are extremely hot and uh, the red sun radiation is extremely hot in there too. And anything that would be in direct sun would just basically be burned to charcoal. Um, saying that, uh, everyone probably knows, especially uh, we know that it's quite hard to get uh, good light in UK because the houses have very small windows and especially if you live in a place where you don't get that much sun. So I would definitely recommend getting supplementary lightning which usually is the LED lights uh, which is bright LED lights or the purple uh, uh, ultraviolet and um, uh, ultraviolet and that's no, ultra blue um, the uh, infrared lights mixed together for growing you can find also different one which is one in red green and blue so it depends what you're looking for or what is your uh, uh, expense uh, how much money you can spend then you can do it second is gonna be um, uh, temperatures so as I said, uh, due to our climate, we are actually in a fairly comfortable position that most of the time the temperatures are in mild between 15 and 20 degrees. 
in winters especially like in central England uh, the temperatures will not go lower than five degrees however if winter comes it's gonna be very brutal so uh, yeah uh, and those temperatures especially if the you can't see a very cold winter coming you are more than welcome to keep your dendrobiums uh, the soft cane ones and the cymbidiums outside to initiate blooming and they will survive because I did have a dendrobium and a cymbidium in a winter time uh, outside when the temperatures drop I think down to three or two degrees and they survived and they were perfectly fine and they actually really enjoyed these temperatures in the house I would definitely recommend keeping your temperatures quite high above 20 degrees unless you have plants that require a drastic temperature drop during the night so leave your whatever growing place you have unheated for one week two weeks something like that just make sure that the plants will get enough warmth during the day so you will not cause a rotting in the roots um, uh, also I need to say that if you're this is going to be connecting with the third point which is media uh, depending on which media going to be using uh, I use uh, semi hydroponics which I absolutely love uh, and that's due to various reasons I would recommend using heating mats because as I said in my previous video the temperature of the water in the uh, uh, in the reservoir cannot go lower than 16 degrees as the roots will start rotting uh, therefore I recommend heating mats and also because it will actually help your plants survive through colder nights especially if your growth space is away from heaters uh, when talking about heaters I do not recommend putting orchids too close to heaters uh, especially if you have a type of a media uh, like bark or sphagnum moss which basically can dry out very quickly uh, and especially like some people they put uh, orchids in glass vases these heat up quite quickly and you can actually boil the roots alive so if you have your orchids uh, on a windowsill underneath a radiator and you notice there are problems like black leaves or the plant is just not doing very well it probably means you should really turn down the temperature uh, or the best idea would be actually put a small thermometer on the windowsill and actually see what's the temperature difference because window sills are uh, under radiators have the thing to themselves so that if you have the heating it's all jolly and the temperature will go quite high it can even go to 25 degrees however once the heating is down because it's a window and let's be honest no window is super sealed uh, even if it's a double or triple glazed you will have a temperature drop because of the glass therefore uh, the roots will experience a very shocking temperature drop which actually can cause them to root um, now, another point, pests. Pests uh, in the UK, I think the worst of them would be uh, uh, spider mites, which I thank God, fingers crossed, never have encountered. Uh, second will be fungus gnats, which are absolute plague. Once they get into your media, there is no saving. Uh, you will literally have to bin all of the media and just, I don't know, find something else. That's why I switch into semi-hydroponics, because it's not an organic material. Uh, and thank God there's no fungus nuts in it because I just was fed up with getting these guys and uh, trying to get rid of them. Uh, another thing is uh, sphagnum moss uh, and bark. So, uh, so with fungus, uh, fungus nuts, they do like any media that will decompose quite quickly, especially bark and fung uh, they like sitting in sphagnum, also sna small snails because they do like hiding everywhere. Uh, and another one uh, is mealybugs, which they absolutely love coming in the house. And those are two types of pests that, if like I, you like to have your windows open in the summer or spring, you will get them. You will get them all the time because I did a small experiment when I left a uh, phalaenopsis on the windowsill with a spike and the plant was being sprayed with a, a anti-insecticide every two weeks and I did clean it very thoroughly every other week uh, uh, one week I actually was doing a daily checkups and I would be getting uh, mealy bags even if the plant was completely clean they would just appear from nowhere uh, and the plant was actually sitting in water so you could check the roots so there was no nothing hiding anywhere um, so they literally just come from outside the same thing with fungus nuts once they come in the house they will nest in your plant, they will lay eggs and yeah, the, the reproductory process is quite quick so you will get a multiplication of fungus nuts very quickly. 
Um, another point I wanted to mention is the type of orchids you can grow in a house, especially if you don't have money to have a fancy greenhouse or any equipment. I would recommend Cattleyas, Phalaenopsis, Paphiopedalum ones, which are actually they are not that hard as everyone claims they are. They're actually extremely easy. Uh, and then Oncidiums and Pragmipediums and Encyclias and so forth. Vandas are actually quite easy to grow in the UK uh, if you find yourself a good way and you can combine the elements of making sure it's watered, uh, giving it enough sun and warmth and fertilizing properly, it should do really well for you. The same thing with Paphiopedalums, uh, I would recommend having a heating map for them and when it comes to the light and everything else, they will do really really well in the UK uh, because in our shadowy environment, even if you're close to the window, it does kind of resemble the forest uh, environment where they do live and in the summer they will get a bit more light, they will be fine and there's nothing to be worried about. Next point I would like to talk about humidity. Well in our lovely country the humidity is always a minimum around 30% and in the summer or rainy days it will go between 30 up to 80 and even 100%. That's why it's very much recommended to use a dehumidifier in your house, especially just to prevent your plants from rotting. Or at least use a fan just to provide the movement of air and control any kind of bacteria and any uh, kind of uh, mold that might grow on your plants. Sorry for be moving like that around my plants, I just am keeping you entertained because I'm pretty sure my voice is a bit boring. Uh, second of all, humidity, especially in uh, winter, when are we living in a house and your, all of your central heating is on, it can drop dramatically. So I do recommend that you make sure that you have like a small humidifier or something like that, especially if you're living in with central heating house. Or at least open the window during the day for a while so the air can circulate and you can replenish that humidity in your air. And lastly point would be water. The water in the UK uh, has the tendency to be in the hard range and it has a lot of minerals in it. Um, usually it's not very acidic. I've been testing the pH of my water which was 7.8 and it was actually a normal uh, and it was fairly soft. It does have minerals in it so I would do recommend if you're living in an area that has very uh, very hard well water to, uh, to filter it. You can actually buy types of uh, shower heads or uh, a sink tub heads that will filter your water from the highest uh, 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 percentage of minerals and iron and sulfur and so forth. So yeah guys, uh, this is my uh, information about the, uh, growing orchids in the UK. Uh, from my personal experience I will add that I grow a variety of uh, orchid types which you can see mostly are uh, Paphiopedalums because I absolutely love those guys. I do have Phalaenopsis too, I have Pragmipediums, I have Cattleyas, I have Oncidiums, Cambrias and Cyclias. I do love my plants and I've been growing them in semi-hydroponics because I think that actually this method is absolutely fantastic for our uh, beautiful island, mostly because I'm trying to keep all the pests at bay and when it comes to watering it's so much easier and we remove the problem of mold, the media and the smell because that's horrid and also uh, the only uh, additional stuff I had to do is you can see I bought myself from Lidl a lamp which costed like three pounds and a heating mat which keeps my plant happy and uh, as you can see I don't have any super special requirements my plants are actually not located in any north or south window they are located in a place that is getting a bit like west south uh, uh, exposure so they get light but through the winter i need to use a led standing lamp which which is not that bad when i'm living in a normal house i don't have any exquisite uh, uh, exquisite stuff happening in here so as you can see i'm pretty sure everyone can uh, uh, go by those rules especially when you're growing your plants uh, as I said, try avoiding listening to advices to people who have no idea how your climate actually works and how is it located. Um, 
so yeah, yeah, I'm more than happy to start a discussion here because I know there will be people who will say something completely different about growing your orchids in the UK. So please do start that discussion. Ask me questions because I will be more than happy to answer them if there are any. And I will see you soon. And if you like this video, please put a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Bye bye.